Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 33. This is a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story from a personal taste. The goal for this video is gonna be 4,000 likes within the first 24 hours. If this happens, we'll get the next rewrite within a week. So please like the video, it takes two seconds and it really helps me out and it helps you guys out as well. Naruto's mind inhabited the body of a female Anbu member. He ran towards the prison building of the Leaf Village, feeling more nimble than usual. The Anbu was a thin lady, and Naruto could feel she was well trained in Taijutsu. He didn't know exactly what he would do to get to Hinata in the prison, he didn't even know where she was. Butterflies filled up his stomach as he saw the looming prison building ahead. Naruto was not a specialist in stealth. Failing was not an option, not only because he needed to talk to Hinata, but also because if he got caught, Granny Tonari would kill him. Naruto, remember to act calm and collected. You belong in there. You are an Anbu member. Ino said through the Yamanaka mind link. Right, Naruto replied as he arrived at the prison site. There was only one entrance to the building, blocked by a large metal door. A single Anbu member guarded the door, wearing a mask. Captain, back so soon? He asked. Um, yeah, I forgot my house keys, Naruto said. The Anbu guard stared at Naruto, not saying anything. Naruto figured he was expecting him to open the door himself. There was one problem though. The door had no handle. So Naruto just pushed the large metal door which didn't move an inch. The Ambu guard startled and assumed a battle stance. What are you doing, Captain? Hino, I think I already screwed up. Naruto said through the mind link. How do I open this door? There's no handle, no nothing. I could just Rasengan it, but I think it would defeat the purpose of using your jutsu, right? Don't be stupid. You will certainly not be able to use a Rasengan for someone else's body. And even if you could, we would all be caught if you did. Ino said. Okay, but what do I do? This Ambu guy is getting suspicious. He's looking at me, you know? We didn't see how they opened the door when the Ambu member left the building. She opened it from the inside. There's probably a barrier seal on the door, which the Ambu members could undo to get inside. And how the hell do I do that? You'll have to make the Ambu guard in front of you open the door. Naruto looked at the guard. Could you open the door for me? I'm in a hurry to go back home, you know? Naruto said, regretting the way he wore the phrase as soon as he said it. Stand down! The guard said, unsheathing his sword and pointing it to Naruto. Who are you and what did you do to the captain? Inu, I need help. That guy's on to me. Naruto said again through the mind link. What are you talking about? I am your captain, he told the guard. Inu looked at Sakura who was holding down Naruto's real body, still tied up and gagged. The Ambu member imprisoned in Naruto's body shook, trying to break away from her handle. Sakura, we're in trouble. The guard's on to Naruto and he cannot open the front door. Can you do something about it? Inu said. I can try. Hold Naruto's body for me and tell him to stall the guard so he can get within range, Sakura said, dashing towards Naruto's direction. Ino jumped on top of Naruto's body. Even though he was bound, it was still difficult to hold him down. Naruto, Sakura's coming to help. Stall the guard until she comes within range, understand? Ino said through the mind link. Look, I'm out of chakra. I cannot undo the seal right now, so if you could do it for me, that would help a lot. Naruto told the guard, grasping for excuses. Liar! I can sense you have plenty of chakra within you. Naruto should have known that the Ambu guard guarding the front door would have been a sensory type. Well, if you can sense my chakra, then you know I am the captain. If I was someone else, I wouldn't have my chakra signature, right? Naruto wasn't positive about Ino's explanation as he told it to the guard, but he figured that was how her jutsu worked. There are always ways to bypass that. Hands behind your back, the guard said, moving his sword closer to Naruto. Naruto complied, hoping Sakura would be able to do something about his situation. Sakura landed on a rooftop, far away from the prison building building, but she could see Naruto with his Ambu body kneeling down as the guard pointed the sword at him. This mission went off the rails faster than she anticipated. Sighing, Sakura weaved hand signs. Persuasive genjutsu was not her speciality. She thought that a genjutsu of that variety wouldn't be powerful enough to coerce an Ambu member into doing her bidding. Programming orders and compelling the target to fulfill them with a genjutsu involved a lot of precision and fine-tuned chakra, something Sakura excelled at, but she just hadn't practiced much with that type of genjutsu. She was confident in putting civilians and even lower level ninjas under it, but this Ambu member guard would be trained to resist it. Still, that was the only thing she had that could save Naruto in that particular situation and progress the mission. Sakura molded her chakra, imbuing the jutsu with an abnormal amount of power to compensate for her lack of prowess. Genjutsu. Crystalline world. 
Naruto had been caught and he was screwed. Rani Tsunade would probably put him under sanctions forever now. He knelt down as the guard commanded him to and Naruto felt handcuffs closing on his wrists. Now there was nothing he could do. Um, I'm sorry Captain, I really am. I was just a little confused. I should have let you through. Um, I apologize. The guard said, flustered. He removed the cuffs and motioned towards the door. Naruto was confused. The change in his demeanor was so fast it looked like it was... A genjutsu. Sakura did it! Naruto couldn't help himself but to smile. Not that anybody would see it behind the Ambu mask he wore. The guard weaved five hand signs. Bird boar, bird dragon hair. Naruto was weirded out. He'd never seen someone weaving hand seals so slow. As if he was a teacher in the academy days trying to teach a novice how to weave hand signs for the first time. Sakura probably made him do it very slowly with her genjutsu so that Naruto could see the seals and be able to execute the same jutsu to leave the prison once the mission is over. Ninja art. Two-pronged barrier release. The tip of the Ambu's right hand fingers shined bright with chakra. He touched the metal door with them and twisted his hand counterclockwise. Surprisingly, the metal door opened with no noise. Naruto gave the guard a curt nod and stepped into the prison. Sakura let out a sigh of relief as she watched Naruto disappear into the building. Luckily, the little amount of practice she had with persuasive genjutsu was enough to compel the guard to open the door and even to show Naruto the proper hand signs to do it later. Maybe this mission would work after all. Sakura! Ino reached out via her mind link. She sounded very distressed. We have a huge problem. I need you back right now. There was no time to relax. Sakura immediately dashed towards Nino's location. Yuga Uzuki found herself in a predicament. She couldn't see anything, her mouth was gagged, and moving was impossible as she was tied up by several pieces of rope. One of her captors was even sitting on top of her. However, she could hear things, hence she knew who had captured her, or at least some of them. Ino, the future leader of the Yamanaka clan, Sakura, Lady Tsunade's star pupil, and Naruto Uzumaki, the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. The strategy they used to capture Yuga was impressive, restraining her from a distance and trapping her inside the body of the Jinchuriki as he would certainly try to infiltrate the prison facility using her own body, the kids actually managed to defeat her. If they had been real enemies, she would have been dead. Had she been slacking off, or were these kids just that strong? Regardless, there wasn't much she could do in her present situation. You are not Naruto. A deep voice said. It unsettled Yugao. The sound didn't come from the outside, but from within herself, or rather, the body she was inhabiting. I can taste your weakness, the voice said. Yugao felt small and alone, as if now she was the only living thing left alone in a cold universe, leading a worthless existence. You let him die because of it. A memory flashed, the worst memory of her life. Fat roaches munching on on the cheeks of Hayate's lifeless body. I could fix that for you. Fill the void. Yugao could see it. The monster that lied within the boy. Hatred incarnate. The nine-tailed fox. Yugao wasn't sure if there was a vision projected onto her mind, or if she was in an alternative plane of existence. But the behemoth pierced her with its gaze from behind a gargantuan cage. You could be something more for the first time in your pathetic life. Red chakra that bubbled with sheer intensity leaked from the cage. It slowly crawled towards Yuga, but she couldn't move. Primordial fear inundated all her senses, freezing her in place. The creature laughed from behind the bars as the chakra began to swirl and envelop Yuga's body. Her skin burned as if she was bathing in a pool of hot coals, but her fear prevented her from screaming, and even if she could, no one would hear her. Naruto entered the prison building. It didn't seem anything special from the inside. The main entrance lobby he stood on had no decoration and only two doors. No one was in the lobby at the moment, so Naruto weaved the Shadow Clone hand seal. He needed to cover both doors as quickly as he could. Ino could only keep up her mind-swapping jutsu for half an hour. Shadow Clone Jutsu! The jutsu didn't activate. He clenched his fists, frustrated. Naruto realized that the Ambu member he inhabited didn't have enough chakra to create a single Shadow Clone. When people told he had 
had an abnormal amount of chakra, he always dismissed them. But now, Naruto understood the difference between his chakra reserves to the norm. An Umbu member opened the door on the left, stepping into the lobby. He nodded at Naruto, who nodded back, and the Umbu member took a guarding position between the two doors. He didn't seem suspicious of Naruto, but he had to act cool and think fast. Which door should he choose? Moreover, those doors looked like smaller versions of the one who let Naruto inside, made with robust metal and no handles. Naruto would have to perform the jutsu Sakura forced the outer guard to show him. The problem was there was no room for failure here, with an Umbu member looking at him while he was performing the jutsu. Naruto stepped forward, choosing the right door on a whim. He weaved the bird, boar, bird, dragon and hare signs, infusing chakra on the tip of his right hand fingers. The Umbu guard's head turned ever so slightly towards Naruto's direction. He was impressed with himself, being able to notice such a minute movement. Naruto touched his hand on the door and twisted his wrist counterclockwise, hoping for the best. Sakura returned to the location where they had immobilized the Umbu member. They moved her to a dark alleyway, hidden from any passersby and windows. When Sakura saw Naruto's real body, a jolt of terror shocked her. He was licking the chakra of the Nine Tails. The ropes that tied him down were breaking one by one, and Inu was having a tough time containing him. She tried to grapple Naruto, but he was shaking with too much violence, the gag no longer holding back his roar. Genjutsu! Drowning paralysis! Naruto's body fell limp. Sakura's Genjutsu had worked. The ropes were almost all shattered though. Ino stepped away from Naruto. Patches of her skin were burned because she came into close contact with the red chakra of nine tails. Naruto hadn't manifested a tail yet, but the chakra mantle was covering his entire body. What's worse, the Genjutsu may have stopped his movements, but the chakra continued to leak out. Why is he doing this? Ino said. Naruto has always been the one keeping the nine tails at bay. And now that his mind is no longer in his body, he cannot contain it. The nine tails is probably taking advantage that Naruto is no longer there, Sakura said. If this doesn't stop, we could have a new Nine Tails incident and Naruto could die. I have to dispel my mind swap so that Naruto can return to his body and contain the chakra. No, Ino. We have to give him more time. I mean, what I'm afraid of is that when the chakra starts to hurt Naruto, he will awaken from your genjutsu. And the Umbu are gonna sense the Nine Tails chakra emerging in the middle of the leaf village, Sakura. We have to abort the mission before a catastrophe happens. No. We can wait. Naruto can suppress the chakra before the fourth tail appears. We need to give him a better chance. The first tail started to grow out of the orange chakra mantle. The two girls looked at it worried. Even still, it doesn't seem like we're gonna have much time and they'll sense us, that's for sure. So tell Naruto to hurry up and raise an anti-sensorial barrier around us. I will keep reinforcing my genjutsu and hopefully this will give us enough time. If I raise that barrier around us, my mind link's not gonna work anymore, you know that. Yes, but it's better than having an entire Anbu squad swapping in on us. Miraculously, the door opened after Naruto performed his jutsu. He stepped into it, not looking back at the Umbu guard. Naruto, listen up, Ino said through the mind link. You have to hurry up for real this time. Your body's leaking out Nine Tails Chakra. We're trying to contain it, but I don't know how long we can manage it. I won't be able to communicate with you anymore after this message. I'm erecting a barrier, so hurry up before the Nine Tails go crazy, do you understand? Naruto's anxiety shot through the roof as he felt the mind link fading away. The Nine Tails could destroy the village if it didn't return to his body to contain it. Naruto looked around. The hallway he found himself in had dozens of doors on each side. He couldn't create clones, so there was no time to investigate them all. Hinata was the highest priority prisoner they had, so she would be in the safest location. The doors Naruto saw were unlike the one Naruto had opened. They were normal, so they wouldn't be leading to any priority prisoners. Naruto race walked through the hallway, trying to appear natural as other Anbu members crossed paths with him. And then he finally saw it. A metal door with no handle. Naruto Naruto used the same jutsu as before to open the door, and it led to a descending spiral staircase. Looking through the hole in the center of the staircase, he saw that it went several floors down. That was it. Hinata had to be at the bottom of this dungeon. Naruto jumped down, falling in between the spaces of the spiral staircase. He focused chakra on his legs, hoping the Ambo member's body would sustain his weight when he landed. Naruto hit the ground with a crunch. His knees screamed in pain, but he was alright. And the only thing he saw at the bottom was a small hallway that led to a single door at the end of it. Bingo. Naruto approached the door, realizing it was a normal wooden door with a handle. There were also no guards. Naruto remembered one of the first lessons Kakashi Sensei had ever given him during the bell test. Naruto hanged upside down after trying to catch a bell Kakashi Sensei had dropped on purpose. A shinobi must read the meaning within the hidden meanings, he told Naruto. This door reeked like a bell dropped on purpose. Regardless, Naruto didn't have time to 
to be careful. The nine tails could go ballistic at any moment. Approaching the door, he realized it wasn't locked, which disturbed him even more. Naruto readied himself for the worse and opened the door, trying to look casual. What he saw inside made every hair on his borrowed body stand up. Sakura casts her drowning paralysis genjutsu for the fifth time on Naruto's real body, forcing his rage to subside. The Nine Tails chakra capped on amassing around him, hurting Naruto and periodically breaking him out of the genjutsu. A trickle of sweat fell off Sakura's chin as she realized the time it took for Naruto to break out of her genjutsu was growing shorter each time. Soon, Naruto would be feeling so much pain her genjutsu would be broken instantly, rendering it useless. When that happened, controlling the Nine Tails is hateful chakra would become practically impossible. Ino concentrated on keeping her anti-sensorial barrier around them so that no one would realize the Nine Tails was about to go on a rampage. Ino, be ready to send Captain Yamato a message. We may need him to suppress the Nine Tails if Naruto doesn't come back in time. Wait, but I, I thought he was in the hospital, Ino said, wincing in effort. The larger the chakra presence she had to hide, the more chakra she had to spend bolstering the barrier, which also muffled sounds coming from within. He'll be discharged tomorrow. He should be able to use his jutsu on Naruto Naruto in the worst case, Ino nodded. Naruto woke up again as the second tail of the mental began to grow. He broke the remaining ropes and screamed. Sakura quickly cast her genjutsu again and Naruto fell limp. There were no more ropes tying him down. They were giving Sakura an additional instant to cast her genjutsu. We're definitely gonna get court-martialed, Sakura said. But this time, her words carried no levity or sarcasm. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes. That door didn't lead to a prison block, it led to an office. An office that belonged to Ibiki Morino, the head of the interrogation squad of the Leaf Village. Granny Tunari had said she sent him and his team to investigate and extract information from Hinata, so it made sense for him to be here, but it was very late at night already. The intimidating man sat behind a desk, back against the office wall. He was riffling through papers, looking for something. That guy creeps Naruto out, he remembered how terrified he felt during the written test of the Chuni exams, afraid he would never advance from his Genin rank. Now that he thought about it, Naruto was still a Genin. Damn that stingy Granny Tsunade for not promoting him. And now that Ibiki is here, there's no chance Naruto won't get caught, meaning that he will never be promoted to Chunin anyway, even if he cleared the entire Chuni exams by himself. What is it, Yugo? Ibiki said. Naruto was taken by surprise. Um, uh N nothing sir. It took him much longer than normal to realize the name of the person he was inhabiting was Yugao, which made his response slow and out of character. Uh, excuse me sir, Naruto said, motioning to exit the room. Wait, you must report to me if you think there's anything worth reporting. I may not be an Anbu, but I am in charge of this facility. It's- it's nothing, Naruto said. He was unable to think of any half-decent excuses, but knew his void answers looked even worse. Come on now, there has to be a reason for you to return after your shift had already ended and you left the building. Screw it. This guy is gonna catch me anyway. I might as well go all out, try everything I can to speak with Hinata, Naruto thought. I was wondering if you managed to make the Hyuga girl talk, Naruto said, trying to sound confident. No, she hasn't said a word yet. Why do you ask? I had an idea that could maybe make her talk. Which is? Hinata Hyuga seems to like Naruto Uzumaki. I could try to use the transformation jutsu and impersonate him. Naruto blushed furiously as he said that. Luckily, he was wearing a mask. That may not be a bad idea, but what makes you think you should be the one impersonating the boy? With all due respect, if your brutal tactics haven't worked out, I think a more delicate approach might work. Also, as a woman myself, I can understand her feelings better than you. Naruto was not a good liar, and he had just told more lies in the span of two minutes than his entire life. Ibiki looked at him with that piercing gaze of his. Naruto felt as if he was analyzing every single cell of his bottle body in minute detail even though there wasn't a single bit of skin exposed. Ibiki narrowed his eyes, smirked, and began to weave hand signs. A wave of chakra hit Sakura as Naruto's real body broke her genjutsu. She cast it again, weaving hand signs as fast as she possibly could, but this time the genjutsu was useless, broken out of instantly. The nine tails mental displayed two full tails, and the red eyes with pupils for slits were staring 
at Sakura as Naruto grinned with malice. I'll bring the barrier down and message Yamato! Ino said, desperation cracking her voice. No, we can still give Naruto more time, Sakura said, weaving hand signs. Naruto dashed at her with insane speed. Using every ounce of Tsunari's taijutsu training, she dodged the attack and released the physical manifestation of her inner self, who grappled Naruto. Sakura put all she had in Daijutsu, imbuing it with a large amount of chakra. You stay right here where you are, you hear me, Naruto? The avatar screamed. It put so much force into its grapple that Sakura was sure it would have pulverized the bones of a normal ninja, and yet it was barely able to stop the two-tail mantle of the nine tails. I don't know how long I'll be able to keep that up, but we have to trust Naruto, Sakura said. Her words were firm. The situation was desperate, but she had conviction Naruto would succeed. Imbiki imbued his right hand with chakra, swinging his arm with insane speed. He touched the wall behind him and twisted his wrist counterclockwise. Luckily for Naruto, he knew the hand signs that opened the barriers around the prison, so he didn't react in a defensive way when Ibiki weaved those. The stone wall opened a secret passage that led to a narrow staircase. I think your idea is worth a shot. Shall we try? Ibiki said with a smile. Well, it would be more effective if I went alone. She won't say anything if you're there. You know she's blindfolded in her chakra is sealed, so as long as I don't make a noise, she won't know I'm there. This annoyed Naruto. It could still be a trap and Hinata not be there at all, but if she was, he didn't want Ibiki to butt in their conversation. She's the type of ninja that will know if there's any other presence around. She'll know if you're there. Ibiki sighed. You know what? You're probably right. He gestured towards the staircase. Best of luck, Yuga. Naruto nodded and used the transformation jutsu, turning his borrowed body into himself, something that was oddly easy. He took a deep breath and went down the staircase. The atmosphere was foreboding. For some reason, they decided to light this secret dungeon with candles. A shiver washed over Naruto when the stone wall closed behind him, making the dim light of the candles even more frightening. The shadows cast by them looked like monsters, and Naruto couldn't help himself but to think about the worst possible nightmares. And oddly, he felt somebody was watching him. Still, he shook his head and continued. He had to be quick about this. Eventually, he reached the bottom of the stairs and found himself in a large chamber. This was no longer a building facility, but an underground cave. The only thing that stood out was a dimly lit prison cell. He approached it, noticing that the bars were made out of thick metal. Naruto's heart sank. Hinata was immobilized by a dozen different chains. There was a ceiling tag covering her eyes. Her mouth was the only part of her body exposed. Hundreds of ceiling tags laid around the prison cell, nullifying Hinata's chakra. He had to force himself not to cry, seeing what they've done to her, even though they had a good reason for it. Hinata Hinata, it's me, Naruto, he said with his actual voice because of the transformation jutsu. I know you're gonna think this is a trick the Amba's trying to pull, but I give you my word, it is me. And you know I don't go back on my word. Hinata didn't say anything. It's true. Ino used her mind swapping jutsu and put me inside the body of an Ambu member. I infiltrated the prison just to talk to you. Ask me something that only I would know. I can answer anything. What did you tell me the first time we went to Ichiraku together? She finally said. You told me I was interesting because I'm a proud failure. And then your dad butted in and didn't let us eat ramen together. I wanted to punch his face so bad. Even though Naruto could only see her mouth, he could tell she was surprised and could almost make out the hint of a smile on her lips. Who is controlling you to do those things, Hinata? Is someone blackmailing you? I swear I'll find them. I'll make them pay. It's it's that Danzo guy, right? He smells like mold. And I swear the next time I see him, I'll make him regret ever being born. Everything I did, I did it on my own free will. Everything I did, I did to protect you, Naruto. No, th that's not true. That's That was wasn't you! You don't kill people, especially innocent people, Hinata! You killed before Naruto. You killed to protect. I did the exact same thing. Her voice sounded weak, shaky. But when I did that, there was no there was no other way. And and, and I was trying to save Aki! That chakra was going to kill you. I saw it. I wasn't gonna let you die in front of my eyes. Not again. You don't know that! And also, you tried to kill Kakashi Sensei! It makes no sense! Because he tries to stop me from saving you. I will do anything to keep you safe. I'll not be weak again. Never again. Keep me safe? What are you talking about? I, I, I don't want you to kill people to protect me. I'd rather die than be saved that way. Do you understand? Leave that root, Ambu. Leave that scum, Danzo. I want you to be the real Hinata. The real Hinata. 
Hinata you mentioned doesn't exist anymore. The real Hinata was weak, a defenseless girl who couldn't move a finger when someone was choking the life out of her mother in front of her. The real Hinata is dead, and I'm glad she is. I, what? I, I don't want. I don't understand. But regardless of what happened, being a merciless killer won't help you with anything. It won't help you save anyone. I can help you no matter what, Hinata. I'll be with you. I'll. I'll. I'll help you with whatever it takes. But you can't just take innocent lives. Do you understand? I do. Naruto let out a sigh of relief. She finally understood. But I cannot oblige. What? Why? I am aware of your feelings, Naruto, but I am a selfish person. To me, keeping you alive is more important than anything else, even your own feelings. So I will do anything to protect you, even killing an innocent mother in front of her child. Tears streamed down Naruto's cheeks. He fell to the ground. His legs were too shaky to sustain his weight. He couldn't believe what he heard. He couldn't believe that person was Hinata. For a moment, he almost forgot the threat of the Nine Tails, but now the prospect of facing the beast was much more welcoming than the reality he was just imposed with. The sweet girl he once knew somehow became a merciless monster. Naruto ran away from Hinata, back up the stairs. He dispelled the transformation jutsu and opened the secret passage with the hand signs he had learned earlier, returning to Ibiki's office. So, got anything out of her, Yugo? He asked. I'm sorry, I got nothing. Naruto said, exiting the office and running as fast as he could towards his real body, though he didn't feel as though he was running towards it, but rather away from Hinata. The third tail began to grow out of the Ninetales mantle. Sakura's avatar started to buckle, unable to tame the beast anymore. The avatar shattered, releasing Naruto. Sakura immediately landed a punch, enhanced with her chakra, and managed to knock Naruto to the ground. She jumped up, preparing a kick from above, but Naruto moved out of the way and hit Sakura's side, flinging her against one of the narrow walls of the alleyway. She hit the wall, cracking it and spitting blood. Unfortunately for her, she didn't have enough chakra to use an avatar release anymore for the third time in a day. Ino tossed smoke bombs, obscuring Naruto's view, and used her sensory capabilities to make her way to Sakura. She picked her up and dashed away. The Nine Tails heard her footsteps and gave chase. Ino, send me into Naruto. I'll try to contain the Nine Tails from within. It's the only option we have, Sakura said, gasping for air. But it's too dangerous. I have to contact Yamato. Ino tossed more bombs and dove into another alleyway. No, we have to trust Naruto. Just do it. Ino side. She weaved hand signs and listened to where Naruto was wreaking havoc from. It wasn't difficult to find his location. She touched Sakura's back. Mind and evasion jutsu. Sakura's consciousness leaped towards Naruto as her body fell limp on Ino's arms. Sakura found herself in the strangest place she had ever been to. A large underground location with a massive cage and a gargantuan beast behind it. The power that creature exhaled was so overwhelming that for a moment she couldn't breathe. She was frozen Sakura couldn't allow that to happen. She couldn't be a helpless girl anymore. She had trained too much to leave Naruto in the lurch again, to only ask for promises that would be a burden for him. Sakura bit her lip, drawing blood. The shock of pain prompted her to act, freeing her body. There was a mass of red-orange chakra swirling around someone near the cage. That had to be the Anbu inhabiting Naruto's body. Sakura had to find a way to get the chakra away from her. The worst part was that the Anbu was walking towards the cage. Age. Sakura reached the chakra and grabbed it with her bare hands. It burned her badly, but she began to yank it out and throw it away. But it was too much chakra. The more she removed, the more it flowed from within the cage into the blob. And Sakura wasn't even close to the Anbu member in the center of it. Ino saw Naruto's body getting confused. Sakura was able to buy her a bit of time so that she could leave her location, dragging Sakura's body with her, but it wouldn't be enough. As Sakura kept on taking the chakra out, her body began to burn. The intensity of the chakra made her skin sizzle, but she didn't care. She just tried to pull out as much chakra as she could, and yet it seemed futile. The Ambu was only a few meters away from the cage, and Sakura wasn't yet close to her. She had a feeling that if the Ambu stepped in there, catastrophe would indeed ensue, as Sakura saw the Ambu member getting closer and closer to the cage. Naruto found Ino, catching up to her, and once more he gave a malicious.
malicious smile. Inu had run out of smoke bombs as she hadn't really geared up for a mission. Naruto dashed towards Inu with insane speed, ready to cut her in half with its chakra claws. She wouldn't be fast enough to dodge even if she didn't have to carry Sakura's body with her. The claw missed, or rather, someone pushed Inu and Sakura to the side, making it miss. Inu saw a masked Umbu member wearing a dark overall. Naruto had returned. He saved her. Naruto's real face turned towards them, bubbling up chakra and hatred, ready to strike again. Inu immediately dispelled the mind-swapping jutsu, transferring Naruto's mind back to his real body. Sakura saw the vague outline of the Umbu member disappearing from a thick layer of chakra. Simultaneously, Naruto appeared at the exact same spot, still engulfed by the chakra mass. Sakura felt relieved. Naruto had experience dealing with the terrors of the Nine Tails. He would know how to contain the chakra. But to her horror, Naruto began to walk towards the cage. No! She screamed. There was too much chakra in between them, and the bubbles were intense. Naruto would never be able to hear her. And yet, Sakura had to stop him no matter what. Ignoring the intense burning sensation, Sakura dived into the chakra cluster, trudging towards Naruto as the dense chakra flow hit her body. Listen to me, Naruto, you have to stop! Sakura screamed, feeling as though she was being engulfed by Inferno itself. She soldiered on towards Naruto. Sakura watched him getting closer to the cage and memories flashed past her eyes. Naruto hurt after Sasuke left the village. Naruto hurt after he fought Sasuke in the land of grass. Naruto hurt after Hinata had killed Aki in front of him. She couldn't be there for Naruto then, but she would be there for him now. The Nine Tails' chakra consumed Naruto, and there was no strength left in him after his conversation with Hinata. He'd always thought heartbreak was a dumb expression, but that was all he felt. Yes, Naruto, I can soothe your pain. Remove the seal. Naruto tried to fight against the urge, against the beast's pull, but he had no power left in him. He couldn't stop walking towards the cage. He felt a void creep creeping within. He was nothing anymore. He couldn't do anything about Hinata. He couldn't do anything about Sasuke. He just didn't have the power to change anything. He would never win, and he would always be alone. One more step, and Naruto would be inside the cage. No, Naruto! Someone said, hugging him from behind, pulling him back, and preventing him from entering the cage. Naruto, you have to resist it. We'll do it together, understand? It was Sakura. Her face flashed at Agony. The Nine Tails' chakra was blasting her entire body, but somehow she made her way to him. How could he have ever thought he was alone? Ever since he joined Team 7, no, ever since Iruka Sensei gave him his headband, he hadn't been alone. How could he have thought he had no strength left in him when his friends trusted him and helped him? That was a stupid thought. So long as he was not alone, he would still have strength left in him. Naruto nodded at Sakura and they began to walk back, away from the cage, trying to exit the chakra bubble. No! Useless girl! The Nine Tails screamed as it tried to send more chakra out. But Naruto and Sakura could move faster now. The two of them were helping each other, pushing each other forward. Come on, Naruto, we're almost there! I know, we'll beat this stinky fox! They emerged from the chakra mass as the Nine Tails slammed the massive cage with its claws, creating a sound that shook Sakura's insides. Oh, Kill you! I'll kill you both! He barks louder than he bites, Naruto said with a smile, pointing at the Nine Tails. Sakura smiled back. To Ino's relief, the Nine Tails' chakra fizzled out, returning Naruto back to normal. Sorry about that, Ino. I needed Sakura's help to contain the fox. Now, um, could you send Sakura back to her body? It's kinda weird to share my head with someone. Ino released her jutsu, Sakura returned to real body, and Ino began healing her from the Nine Tails' strike. See? I told you to trust Naruto, Sakura said, smiling at Ino. Sakura combined her healing ninjutsu with Ino's to bolster the speed of her recovery. Naruto looked at the Amba member whose body he had inhabited. She was sitting at the corner of the alleyway, shivering in terror. Naruto kneeled next to her. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. I wish you didn't have to see that thing. Yuga removed her mask. All of a sudden, she felt claustrophobic using it. Tears streamed down her face and her lips quivered as she looked at Naruto, raising her trembling hand 
hand she touched Naruto's cheek. No, I am sorry. I'm sorry you have to endure that every day. I'm sorry we're so ungrateful. Thank you for what you've been doing for us, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto felt unexpected warmth washing over his body. No one had ever thanked him for that before. He smiled. You're most welcome. Sakura and Ino stood up close to her. We need to wipe out her memory, Sakura said with a hint of sadness to her voice. Naruto nodded, standing up. Sakura used her memory altering genjutsu, combined with Ino's Yamanaka mind wipe technique to change Yugao's perception of what had happened that night. After finishing, the three jumped away before the Anbu could come back to her senses. A few moments passed, and Yugao stood up, looking at the sky, tears still streaming down her face. Ibiki Morino landed next to her. So, did it work? Yugao asked. He managed to get the Hugo girl to finally talk, but she didn't give anything away that we didn't already know. Ibiki said with a shrug. I'm still impressed with her plan and execution. They even tried to wipe your mind. I'm glad to see that the Anbu's countermeasures against mind-meddling abilities are working well. Ibiki then saw Yugao's face, noticing the tears. Why are you crying, Yugao? I saw saw what that boy has endured for us. The Nine Tails almost went ballistic with me inside of his body. I couldn't do anything against it, but somehow he managed to get it under control. Yeah, that one certainly is something. Ibiki, how did you know he would try to infiltrate the prison to speak with a girl? He laughed. Naruto Uzumaki once took my written examination in the Chunin exams. He didn't write a single word down during the entire test, but he still managed to pass through sheer gut. I just had a feeling he'd try something like that. He's the type of ninja that acts with his heart. You're polar opposite then. You must despise shinobi like that. Much in the contrary. Those are the shinobi I admire the most. Naruto, Ino, and Sakura put as much distance between themselves and the Ambo member as they could. So, Naruto, did it work? Did you talk to that person? Ino said, I did, but I didn't hear what I wanted to. It was actually much worse than I expected. Sakura touched his shoulder. It's alright, you'll sort things out. I know you will. Naruto smiled. Thanks, Sakura. I would be dead if you didn't help me out there. Hey, I told you I'd do anything you needed from me, she said, giving a friendly punch to Naruto's arm. You too, Ino. Thanks for the help. No worries, Naruto. It was terrifying but fun. When they reached the center of the leaf village, Naruto saw something that took him by surprise. Gamahiro, one of the great toad summons of Mao Myoboku, was in the village. His body was hard to miss due to its size. Naruto pointed at it. Look! Pervy Sage is back! A surge of hope hit Naruto. Tsunade had sent Pervy Sage to find Sasuke. Maybe he found out where he was, and now they would finally be able to do something. They finally would have a lead. Something concrete to do. That's not good, Sakura said. But what do you mean? The toad is next to the hospital. Those words extinguished Naruto's hope, turning it into worry. Naruto, Sakura, and Nino dashed towards the hospital as fast as they could, and when they arrived, they found pandemonium. Medical ninjas going back and forth, yelling orders at each other. One of the medics spotted Sakura and immediately ran towards her. Sakura, we're gonna need you. Wh what happened? She said. It's Lord Jiraiya. He was wounded in battle. He's in critical condition, hanging by a thread. Naruto felt as if the moon itself crashed upon him. He couldn't breathe. He he couldn't move, he couldn't speak. Pervy Sage couldn't die. No, that was impossible. Sakura, we're gonna have to perform the healing regeneration ritual to save him and the chances are still slim, the medic said. All right, and uh, how can I help? Sakura said. You'll be the one helming the ritual. What? I know Lady Tsunade's not in the village, but I've never done it before. It has to be Shizune. Shizune left the village a few hours ago. The feudal lord himself called her. Apparently his son suffered an accident and required immediate specialized treatment, Sakura. You are the only one with enough skill and knowledge to helm the ritual. You're Lord Jiraiya's only chance. Naruto looked at Sakura and he realized that because of his selfish mission request, she had spent almost all her chakra. He'd done it. He just killed Pervy Sage. Sakura noticed Naruto's look of utter shock and desperation. She slapped both of Naruto's cheeks at the same time, making a loud cracking noise, and held her hands on his cheeks, not letting him go, staring straight at his eyes. Her gaze burned with determination. Don't don't worry, Naruto. I will save him. That is my promise to you. Sakura dashed towards a cleaning room. She would have to disinfect her body before the procedure. Another medical ninja called Ino to help out as well. She gave Naruto a nod and went the same way Sakura did. Naruto should have never asked them to go on that mission. Should have gone alone and talked to Hinata, but if the girls hadn't gone with him, Ravi Sage would have a better chance to survive. Sakura was in no condition to perform such a complicated healing ritual. He had heard Neji was healed with that ritual 
April after they failed to retrieve Sasuke, but by the looks of it, Jiraiya was in a much worse state. Yet, Sakura had promised Naruto she would save Pervy Sage. Root Ambu members knelt in front of Danzo Shimura. The reports say that Jiraiya has returned to the village, but he has suffered a bad wound, my lord. He's vulnerable. Should we assemble an assassination squad to deal with him right now? No. That will work against our goals. But Lord Danzo, if Jiraiya is in the village during the plan, it's not going to work. He'll interfere, especially with a copy ninja here as well. I am aware. That's why I'll deal with both of them simultaneously. Kill two birds with one stone. How far along is the army? We managed to bring almost half of them close into the village, avoiding any detection already. We'll finish the process within a week. Good. I'll need time to take care of Jiraiya and Kaka. Kashi. The plan will still work so long as if the slug princess doesn't return to the village in time. And she'll be preoccupied in the land of crystals for over a week with a diplomatic meeting. So make sure all communication leaving the village is intercepted. Tsunari mustn't know about Uriah's condition or she may be awakened. Naruto met Gamahiro outside of the hospital. Gamahiro, which Akatsuki member did this to Pervy Sage? The Toad's expression grew even darker than it already was. He seemed hesitant. I need to know, Gamahiro! It wasn't an Akatsuki member, Naruto. It was Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto thought he could not receive worse news than he already had during this day. But somehow, it kept on getting worse. He thought he would be numb at this point, but this new revelation hurt more than the previous ones. What? What do you mean? Sasuke wouldn't do that! He wouldn't kill Pervy Sage! He did aim for an unlethal spot and told me to take Lord Jiraiya to Lady Tsunari so that she could heal him. But she's not in the village. Lord Jiraiya's condition is too critical for us to go fetch her and he needs treatment now. I'm sorry, Naruto. He summoned me during the fight, but I couldn't do anything against the Sharingan. Where was this fight? Where did this happen? I am not going to tell you. What? Why not? Because you're gonna leave the village right now and go after Sasuke. Sasuke, won't you? Gamahiro saw right through him. This is foolishness, Naruto. Sasuke has become an extremely powerful and dangerous ninja. If Lord Jiraiya himself lost to him, I'm afraid you alone wouldn't fare any better. Naruto punched the ground in frustration. Gamahiro was right. That was a stupid idea. He had already acted impulsively in taking Sakura and Inu with him in his infiltration mission. Going after Sasuke at night alone would be even more stupid. This had been one of the worst days of his life. He found out he not was a murderer on her own volition and wouldn't listen to him, Pervy Sage was on the brink of death, and Sasuke, his best friend, was the one who put him in that condition. Still, Naruto remembered Sakura pushing through the chakra of the Nine Tails to wake him from his stupor. He remembered the kind Umbu lady who showed Naruto empathy no stranger had ever shown before, and he remembered Sakura's promise to save Pervy Sage. Amidst despair, small shards of hope still remained intact. Perhaps they wouldn't push the darkness away, but so long as they existed, there would be a reason to fight. Watch part 34 of the rewrite right here. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and like the video so we can reach the like. All those things really help me out with the algorithm, so please do leave it in the comments below what you thought about today's episode. And thank you so much for watching, guys.